Hello, this is Reverb Audio, and we are going into void pipes. So void pipes are are truly amazing loudspeakers, and and I want to uh, build a resource on on my small little YouTube channel on void pipes because uh, they are very easy to build. So if you want a high quality, high efficiency loudspeaker for yourself then uh, building a void pipe is the easiest cabinet uh, that you can build it's uh, and uh, and and it's very cheap because you only need to need a pair of drivers for the loudspeaker and you don't need to mess around with crossover and that's it it's very easy and and uh, to build and it gives a really fantastic result and you can use a one watt amplifier to drive such loudspeakers. And about 20 years ago, uh, when I built my void pipes, there were a lot of resources online about void pipes. And then there were a lot of people who, who posted a, a lot of their reports on building them, what was their experience with it. And now most of these are gone. And, and that's truly a shame uh, that uh, all of those uh, websites and blogs are not uh, not anymore and uh, and that's why that's another reason why I thought that uh, I will just dig through my memories and then find some of those sites cached ver versions and uh, and and we'll point them out what were the key resources for void pipes and what were people's experiences and when you build one what to look out for and i'm not just recommending one road to do and this is the right way and and there's no other way but i will point out that when you choose different options what will be the differences in sound because I built many versions and I heard even more versions. So, so without further ado, uh, there is uh, one very nice report here, the Joburg Void Pipe, and uh, by Void Pipes made in Joburg by Kevin, and then he was super kind to post uh, the, the process, a slideshow of how he made his Void Pipes. And these are the void pipes that uh, you remember, like uh, world's second best speakers. So if you just type in world's second best speakers, that's the video that comes up. Tech Ingredients channel posted it. And, and, and he, uh, if you haven't watched it yet, watch it. And if you are interested not just in void pipes, he is going to explain a lot of things about uh, speaker cabinets, about uh, MDF versus uh, plywood, and, and lots of things in audio that are basics and you have to know it if you are going to build your cabinet. So if you decide to build open baffles or, or base reflex cabinet, whatnot, still watch this video. It's about an hour long, but look at that. It got almost 2 million views and, and, it, and, and he well deserves these two million views and and i'm truly overjoyed that actually there are real people in the world who who are are interested in loudspeakers and and, and stereo in a serious way and uh, so there's the speakers that that he proposed that he shows here and and uh, and kevin he built those speakers the same way uh, and then he shows how, uh, what was his process. So let me just start the video. He has really music on it and, and it's, it's a slideshow. So he first, he showed that that's the plywood, that's the board that he used to cut up. So what you need to do first, if you uh, use uh, plywood and then you can get, like here in the US, you can get four feet by eight feet long boards but uh, in Europe it's more like I think the, the 5 feet by 10 feet boards that you can get and, and what he did you see that he uh, showed draw in the lines where to cut the board and, and, and how he uh, did it 
is you see that when you look at the void pipe, it, it's tapered, so it looks like a triangle, right? And and the two sides of the triangle you can cut out by by diagonally marking the board. So so this piece will be one side, and the other piece will be the other side. And then next to it, you can use the front and the back for one strip each. And then you get uh, two boards, and out of those two boards, you can get the cabinet out, right? And first, you just have to measure it out. Make sure that when you draw a line, uh, calculate with the fact that the blade has a certain thickness, and uh, and they won't be um, uh, the same exact millimeter where you drew the line. So so make sure to calculate that and practice your woodworking skills a little bit. Like uh, when you cut with with the blade, then uh, how much material is wasted. And, and when you cut these long lines, uh, the way I did it, we did it, it was like really tedious. Uh, just used, used the saw and, and then cut through the line. But do yourself a favor and, and use uh, a piece of wood and clamp it to your board and use it as a guide for your saw. And then it will be a much, much cleaner cut and uh, yeah that that's something important so this is how it looks like when he has cut out the uh, pieces of uh, wood and he is uh, so now it's just the front part of the buffer and and the side and it's it's flat on the table and he is basically gluing them you see there is glue and he's also using screws so so the glue is the thing that basically holds the sides together but you put in screws because uh, for the glue to make a nice tight connection he, uh, there needs to be pressure between the panels and and you can use those screws so that uh, when as the glue dries it will dry into a strong joint also, if you don't want to use screws, you can instead use clamps, but you will need a lot of clamps. Uh, and you might have those tons of clamps if you have a woodworking workshop, but if you don't, I certainly didn't have those clamps. I built my void pipes in my one bedroom a tiny apartment. I did all the sewing, everything in my living room. I didn't have a workshop, nothing. Uh, if and, and I'm saying that because if you are dedicated, even if you live in a studio, there's absolutely zero excuse why you can't build yourself a pair of speaker cabinets. Yes, there will be mess after it, but uh, the vacuum cleaner has already been invented. Uh, covers have been invented to cover your sofa, your audio equipment while you are doing the woodwork. So uh, you can build a pair of loudspeakers in your living room or your bedroom if you choose so. So, so eventually you don't even need the clamps, you just need the screws to, to secure the panels together until they dry. The important part about the screws though is that when you uh, use them, do not use screws uh, that are magnetic. So test them with a magnet, and if the magnet sticks to it, don't use it. My recommendation would be to use brass screws. Uh, I know they are a little bit more expensive than uh, than the, the cheap uh, screws you can get for pennies, but it's still not a big money to buy uh, 100 or 200 brass screws because you will need at least like 200 screws or more for the pair of these void pipes. It, it will be still under like five, six dollars in the US to get uh, 200 brass screws to hold uh, these pipes together. So it's not going to break any bank whatsoever. Uh, but using brass is critical. And, and it's because the resonances of brass are not as harsh and cold as that of steel. So you can use stainless steel for your cabinet, which is uh, non-magnetic, 
but even then that still adds, adds, adds a hardness to the sound that brass doesn't do and uh, and people who have uh, m make music instruments like uh, trumpets and horns they have already recognized this that if you make it out of steel its sound is unbearable and if you make uh, the instrument out of brass it's, it's a much more warmer much more natural much better sound so let's move on a little bit so for for the center now it's been routered very nicely but if you don't have a router that router it means that you cut that uh, first you made the hole and then you cut that uh, inner groove inside so your driver can fit into it if you if you don't that and that's what the router does that makes that inner groove if you don't have that i didn't have a router at the time and your driver is sticking out that's okay too it's not as good if you can router it and 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 flash mount the driver it's uh, much better for the sound it will make the mid-range uh, uh, nicer and it will make the sound less shouty so if there's a little shout in the sound it will take care of it uh, but if you can do it don't worry then just mount it on the surface uh, what's next so now we can see it from the top uh, and what he was doing is that he was removing the screws after he was done and he, he put these wooden pegs instead mm, I have not done this on my speakers uh, they, they have the uh, the metallic screws in them and and it wasn't a problem as long as you are using non-magnetic screws you are okay but you can make an experiment. I did that experiment initially. I made them with magnetic screws. And then my mentors too saw it and he told me, okay, change those to non-magnetic screws. And, and uh, I changed at, at first just about uh, 40 of the screws on the top. And I was just shocked how much better the imaging became. And, and the most important part is to avoid the magnetism because that slight magnetic uh, ability of those screws that's big enough to uh, create problems of your drivers so that uh, that it will affect low sensitivity signal so now you see the driver is mounted inside i would say mount the driver only after everything is done because it's it's uh, it's very fragile and then what I did of course I think that's that's what Kevin did here he's just put in the driver to test if it fits but after that just remove it and then finish it uh, without the driver so as don't get any dust sawdust or dirt or and don't uh, damage it by accident uh, here we can see the driver from up close uh, let's see du, du, du. and now he is going to make the bottom so for the bottom what I did uh, is that here you see that the, uh, the pipes are standing on on that uh, bottom plate and for me what I did is I put a piece of wood inside between the two sides so my bottom is uh, inside you can put the bottom underneath or inside it doesn't really matter we will go into the stand and how you mount your pipe on the floor that will be in another episode so for now it uh, it won't make it or break it how you make the bottom of your loudspeaker now we can see it from the front and side nice very nice super super nice work and you see that's a router so that's what he uses to create that bevel in the front bevel and also router down the edges router down the corners and that's an advice for every loudspeaker if you have a loudspeaker that has these hard edges at the corners get a router router it down so it's nice and soft there's a corner because that's where the edge diffraction occurs so when you have those sharp corners that's where we get those nasty side effects that mess up the imaging and, uh, 
Let's see. So he makes uh, this uh, button piece, which is like a bent aluminum uh, piece with damping on it to help the sound. Uh, and I would say for it, maybe, do we have another picture? No, I think in the, in the end we will have a picture for that. Let's see. Let's skip to that. Can we skip? No, I don't see it. So anyway, uh, but now I want to say that this thing, that aluminum piece, where is it? Uh, no, I can't find it. I'm sorry. Um, uh, so now let's just jump to the next part. I will talk about that later on. So he creates these nets to hold the uh, filling, the polyfill inside on the top. And what I did is that uh, I didn't use any sort of net whatsoever. I, the polyfill doesn't need this holding. It will stay there on its own. And don't worry, it won't fall out. So for me, my polyfill has held there for two decades and it's fine without any, any netting or whatsoever. So you, you don't need to worry about that. And I filled my pipes after I finished the entire pipe and through the uh, hole of the driver, I reached in with my hands and did the stuffing uh, like that. And for the stuffing, just make it as light as possible. Uh, I uh, I will make a separate, a full video on the stuffing and its effects. But right now I want to show you what he did. So you see, he created the stuffing first and then he closed the panel. And uh, here you go. He, he put in the driver and he also put in internal wire that goes, I think his internal wire goes down to the bottom or stays right there. Let's let's just find a picture of that. Uh, can I find a picture of that? Maybe not. But it's very important that here are your drivers and put the binding post right behind the driver. Do not make the internal wires drop down and connect here. Because then you have like a, almost like a meter long wire which is flapping in the breeze inside. Don't do that. Just keep it as short as possible so that it is subject to the least amount of resonances inside the cabinet and also the internal wire, the quality of it and the gauge of it is extremely important, beyond important and that will be the single factor that will define whether your cabinets can do base or they fail in the base department. So be prepared to go out of town to have a very high quality and uh, and overall heavy total gauge internal wiring and, and connect your speaker cable here at the end. And I think that's what I want to uh, say for now and, and I'd like to congratulate Kevin for this beautiful pair of void pipes. Look, that's what he did. He put the uh, connectors in the back but I would say that uh, do not get that uh, connector piece, uh, that, that plastic piece. Uh, what I did is that I put the binding post directly into the wood. So you don't need that uh, resonating uh, plastic piece there. It's just make the connection directly through the wood itself. It will also save you money and uh, and improve a little bit the total sound quality so kevin fantastic job and and he also gives a little description of how he likes the sound of it he he loves it and and i'm pretty sure that he does because they are awesome speakers so please like subscribe and uh, build your avoid pipes bye bye